y'all, Ryan Olson with White Bone Creations. Just a real quick 30 second update on what's happening in my world as we move forward. So it's been exactly two years since we started the White Bone Creations app and it just was not a success. That's on me because I just don't like promoting me. I don't like feeling like I'm getting in your wallet to share with you what I would share for free anyway. It was a great avenue as YouTube was changing rules, but the truth is, uh, I think what we're gonna do is just go back to YouTube full time and just don't monetize anything and just let the chips fall where they fall. So this is the first of many videos on quartering, skinning, gutting, things of that nature, the stuff that I really think is important that's missed in a lot of today's film. I'm just gonna make sure it's not monetized. We're gonna let it roll and hopefully I don't get my hands slapped, but this is how to quarter an antelope Thank you so much for watching. And I'm gonna take off all four joints first. That's my favorite way to do it. I'll just use that doll blade first before I change it. Nice. Uh, I don't think there's any secret sauce, Let but. Me. Too much board, there we go. Right, but that Achilles tendon comes down here and connects, so there's a joint below. You can see it. It's difficult. I always like to just put unnatural pressure and then roll your knife. When you feel it release in your hand, you know you've caught it. It's not easy to do. I already made a mistake on one today, and I've done hundreds of them, so I can't get real excited about it. Just be okay with your mistakes. Correct. From the other side, I got pressure here, right? Feel that pressure release? It means I hit that little band that connects it all. Ground joint union. <laughs> okay, same thing on the front. Is it non cathodic? You can see that big knob, and you can see a little dent right here. Whoop, little dent, that's the dent. Right through the knob, all the way around. supposed to say when we do it Uncle Bud? Signs the papers. Signs the papers. <laughs> Signs the papers. Then I change my blade. Existing, nobody gets hurt. Sharp once again. Sharp once again. From here, because you got a new blade, if you come underneath and just follow the hairline. You can't get real excited about antelope because you're gonna get hair in your meat. But if you're brining and doing all that, it's really not an issue. <laughs> just take it off later. So one clean cut. And then I always like to just take the noggin off so I'm not fighting it. You can see with that, essentially the hairline follows his mandible, his jawbone. Put some unnatural pressure. And then sometimes like this. You'll actually hear that little piece release. This is the easiest look at it right here. That is the atlas joint. Don't think you don't think a guy's got to get really, really good at this. It takes a lot to get these done, but try not to get that to fall off. So you should be able to do your whole animal with one little, well, not, not necessarily one, but with a blade like this, you should never need saws or bones if you know your cuts. We can just do the old New Zealand tug of war. Both New Zealand and in Turkey, <laughs> they spend a lot of time punching, punching, using, using your hands, 
it's a great way to do it with a really, really sharp knife. It's easy to make a lot of nicks and holes. The only problem I can see in Argentina, you're leaving too much matambre on there. Matambre. You get that, Santiago? Matambre. Matambre. Santi, let me have it. The magnum? Yeah, go. Matambre. <laughs> and what does it mean? Kill the hungry. <laughs> it's, is it correct? Is he yeah, lying? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but, Mata hambre. It's very spicy. <laughs> it's very spicy. Yeah, that right there is, is very much a favorite cut of meat in Argentina. We are told. They call it matambre. And it means what? Feed the hungry. Right? Yes. I'm ready. You know what it means? You gotta be really hungry to be scraping all that off. <laughs> I look at that as you just leave that for seed. <laughs> That's you giving back to the ants and the buzzards. And the... That's maybe a really good talking point that I think people miss, right? We have guys that get caught up in this, I eat everything, I don't waste anything. If you're leaving it in the field, right? You miss a little bit of meat, you're a novice, you're, well, it doesn't matter, right? You make silly cuts like I just did. If you're leaving it in the field, it's not being wasted. You're, you're kidding yourself if you think that it's not being used by bugs, ants, bird life. Like, we need to be a little less high and mighty when it comes to things like that. I'm tripping over somebody else's legs. Oh. <laughs> yes, you are. You can feel with your finger, this little bone right here. You just ride your knife until you come around that bone and then go right back down. You just, just cut meat as close as you can get it to bone. Then you'll find that, that joint. You can see there's a little connective tendon in there. Cut that tendon, makes a super cool sound. And then just follow around. If you can get yourself in a comfortable, comfortable position you can be really, really, really effective not knowing all your cuts. And without a camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially, <laughs> especially without a camera. There's a really clean nice. pelvis. You'll get a little hair. It's all right. Again, if you're putting it down in a cooler with ice, I'm still a water and ice brine guy, but that water will essentially help you get that hair off. Oh, gee, Yeti. It's getting cold. Nice. So we're just going to do one side at a time. I'm going to take this shoulder off now because I like to take the back strap and necros all as one piece. So you can see that nothing holds that shoulder on other than tissue. This one looks like you had an injury in the shoulder here recently. Real recently, there was an injury in this. It looks like a 0.243 hole. <laughs> it does. <laughs> At about 3,000 feet a second. <laughs> Now, typically, if I do this on the ground, I get to this point where I've got it around the elbow. And then I have enough leverage to, like, put my foot down and pull it out. I don't know if I'll be able to do it here, but we'll try. And then try not to make all those little tight cuts all the way down. Just sock it like you would a... I think if you skinned a coyote or something. The new ones will have a little breather. 
but that original doesn't. As you can see that shoulder's off and you can see how much back strap rides behind that shoulder. So whether it's important to you or not, it's easiest to get that shoulder off. Come all the way down and take your entire neck roast all in one piece. If you don't know where to go here, you can sort of see where the rib stops and there's this little alcove where this loin sits. Once you get started, I like to come from the top down on the first one so I don't puncture the gut. The gut's right there. This camera guy thing is the deal. Yeah. And I always just look at this sort of like you're carving a pumpkin, right? You're just trying to take everything in that whole void. Then from here, I do like I'm shooting, I'm like I'm swinging with the bat that's too long. I choke up a little bit. <laughs> Is that the right term? Yep. I don't know a bunch about baseball. <laughs> I'm choke up some. Oh, I just got a whiff of critter. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it tastes different than a raisin. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real bitter milk dud. <laughs> Starting to stove up. Yep. That's cool where he's doing a trick. side so inside the crotch just delicately let your knife do the work there's that pelvis bone see I was on the back strap side and just work your way around there's that tendon there's a the big release What's that, Ryan? That's his uh, urethra. That's a, you have to choke up on that? That's a famous old singer. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. right there. Uh, Again, that ball bone up and over. And then especially if you have a table like this, which is really, really nice, but you're I'm sort of letting gravity Letting gravity help me do everything. Ta da! Don't overwork yourself if you don't have to. You might be having to put this on your back and carrying it 10 miles. You might not have a barn and a truck close by like that. <laughs> oh, nice and cold. Nice. Shoulder. Feel the heat still on them, man. So yeah. crazy. Yeah. Where's our body temperatures run? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's. I don't know. They sit, you know. Obviously, they have hollow hair, and then they. No, oh, good job. You know who you don't see make mistakes like that, like holes in there. Sheep guides. Any yeah. of those guys in the big north? It's like that's. You, I mean, this is a no-no up there, right? Oh and of course, those real expensive animals like sheep and those really special haunts, like, that's not an option. And so they, like, in the general world of, world of things, this would all have to be removed before um, you get to your taxidermist. I'm intentionally trying to get this off 
and trying to get that meat cold. It's not an excuse. I wasn't trying to do that, but don't beat yourself up over that. Well, the biggest reason is tax taxidermists don't like matambre. They don't like matambre. <laughs> you find me a taxidermist that likes matambre, and <laughs> I'll call you a liar. I think it's too spicy. It is too spicy. <laughs> it's for sure. You Americans you don't like the matambre. Why? It's too spicy. I'm only was gonna cut this. Uh, just ooh, better keep those. Oh look at there! Ah oh, nuts! No, those are extra kneecaps in case his go bad. <laughs> There. Want to do those for lunch? Call those Rocky Plains oysters. Want to do those for lunch? Sure. You know the best way to cook them? <laughs> cook the piss out of them. Boil the piss. One goat jacket. You're not going to need it now because it's warm out. On my new little camera there, we had a few heating issues from running long. So essentially, we just did the same thing on both sides. Once I got all the limbs off, the back strap, neck roast, front and hind quarters, I'm going to gut him so I can take out that tenderloin without having all that pressure. Then I'm going to grab his heart, and then I'm going to show you the rib roll, and we'll be all wrapped up. Oh boy. Oh, look like the movie The Alien. There's a great look at the diaphragm. So, this is the part that's separating essentially digestive, cardiovascular, limo window, right? They don't, yeah. let, they don't let them, they don't let them. People in the front talk to the people in the back. So want to keep it <laughs> this is also your skirt steak. If you're ever at the store and order skirt steak, you're getting a diaphragm. Cut this part and give you a view into the front of the cab. Where your driver's cussing you. Now the reason I did this is because this loin, this tenderloin, rides up underneath the spine. And with all that pressure you have the chance of nicking the gut and contaminating your meat. So I just relieve the gut and come on in and grab your loin. This is what we're going to have for lunch today. Just one little loin. Yum. That's two steak melts, yeah? Okay, now I'm hungry. Yeah. Oh man. Let's release some stuff. So I, I reached up front and cut the esophagus. The heart lives in a sack. Out of that. Mm -hmm. We can do that too. Now the reason I'm pulling them, I'm still, still complaining about it. Whoa. Whoop. Whoop. That might be so worse than it go. Was that him or you? This is a part I've always struggled to show people. So essentially, this is all of his poop that goes through his pelvis. We typically will ream this because it doesn't matter. I can't contaminate it now. I'm going to cut where his poop goes through his pelvic canal. See the poop? Oh, look at freezing. And just release, release all that pressure. Maybe here's a really good look, bud. Here's a really good look of a loin out and a loin in. Let me get from back here, maybe get a little bit. There we go. Oh, yeah. So in order to get that out, it's kind of like a reverse back strap, right? 
I'm just gonna ride on the inside of the spine. A lot of guys will do this from the top with their fingers. You're just trying to scrape it free of the spine. Nice. Yummy, yummy. The prize piece of meat. In states like Alaska, you have to take all of your rib meat on animals. Not every state requires it, but it's a really cool thing to learn is to do the rib roll. All right, there's quite a bit of meat here. So you come down the inside of one rib. All right, this is the short rib. Fold it over, and then you're trying to run your knife across the top of the next rib. Does that all make sense? Okay, once you've got it clear, then you come down the inside of that rib. Up around the front, down. You're trying to skin over the top of the rib. Right, all the way down, cut that alcove inside of the rib. Run your knife right across the top of that rib. Down on the inside of the alcove. It's a bit tedious, but the beauty of it is, is when you have it out, you have these beautiful high and low pieces of meat. So if you were to say roll this up and make like a Thai roast out of it, you would get pieces that were well done, you would get pieces that were medium rare, You'd have lots of texture, lots of connective, connective tissue where a lot of that texture or taste comes from. And lots of flavor. Lots of flavor. Lots of flavor. I sort of, I've sort of fell out of pattern a little bit, but it doesn't, it doesn't so much matter. I mean, it's good to have to grind, right? If you're gonna grind, yeah, you can grind it. The nice part is, is you can, you know, you can. It's 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 a little easier to manage than than the super big piece. I actually think this is easier on the ground. That part is, yeah. I, I, for whatever reason, I don't know. I, I guess I've never done one inch chest height. Obviously the ribs get bigger as you go forward. Your short ribs, your main ribs, they're more important because they're protecting more important stuff. Give this old rib roll to Uncle Bud to put on the smoker for us. Nice. There's our bullet, so we'll wind it up right here. Nice. Really cool, right? Yeah. So you have this whole piece of meat. This is really a good look, too, of how clean it is. But you can imagine taking this, right? Stuff full of peppers and onions and cheese, and then rolling it. You roll that roast tie it off, season the fire out of it, maybe bacon bomb it, and then cut them in rings. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm hungry. <laughs> okay. What do you think of that, Uncle Bud? Hey, that was good, Rhino. You're such, you're such a wonderful person. <laughs> so, <clears throat> this is what you end up with. Pretty much unedible, unless you want to make a soup out of it. Stock. Our stock, yeah. Some intestines, there's liver there, but 
found in the past antelope liver is a little on the rough side for me. The, the, the part that people miss is they see this and they think, oh, I just want it. I just want this because uh, there's something I can save. Correct. Can you get that home? Can you cool this? Can you keep this from spoiling? Yeah. Do you have space for it? Does it make sense? Versus taking everything you can and leaving this as new nutrient recycling. Let the animals finish this up as intended by God. Correct. You think every coyote eats every piece of stuff on them? <laughs> Just be realistic for one second about that. That's, that's yeah. good as it gets.